If you've ever wondered about the power of prayer and fasting, or if you're seeking a deeper understanding of the spiritual world, this video is especially for you. Don't miss out, because the knowledge that will be shared can change the way you perceive spirituality. May all the blessings that are bound, delayed, and withheld be released all at once upon your life, and may this video bring light to your understanding. In this video, you will comprehend what occurs in the spiritual realm when we pray and fast. Watch this video until the end because it brings forth a powerful revelation that can change your life if you apply what we will discuss. Many people are unaware that there is a connection between what we do with our physical bodies and what happens in the spiritual world. However, the Bible provides this understanding in various passages, clearly stating that there is indeed a relationship between the physical and the spiritual. In this video, we will focus on two main passages that vividly show this incredible connection between the physical and the spiritual in our lives. In today's video, we'll explore what happens in the spiritual realm when we fast and pray. In Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 to 11 state, Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. In this passage, Moses, along with Joshua, goes to battle against the Amalekites. While Joshua and the Israelite soldiers fought in the valley, Moses positioned himself on the hill with his hands raised to the sky, as mentioned in verse 11. When Moses lifted his hands, Israel was winning the battle, but when he lowered his hands, Amalek was prevailing. There came a moment when Moses couldn't bear to keep his hands raised any longer due to the lengthy battle. Moses had to rely on the support of Aaron and Hur to sustain his hands directed towards the heavens because this physical act of Moses influenced the supernatural intervention of God in that battle, causing the people of Israel to gain victory in the invisible realm due to Moses' raised hands toward the heavens. You might think, if God is going to win the battle, he can simply snap his fingers and end it all. However, in this passage, God shows us that for his action to take place in our lives, we first have to do our part here on earth so that God can do his part in heaven. Therefore, God begins to act when we finish doing our part here on earth. In this story, Moses' part was to be on the mountain with his hands raised in prayer throughout the entire battle. And as he did this, the people of Israel would prevail. While Moses fulfilled his part, this act symbolized an exchange of connection from God to his people, like an internet connection. If the signal drops, the internet stops working. Therefore, we must always have our hands raised toward God. That is, we should always be connected to the source from above. The problem is that many Christians, due to the duration of their struggles, end up lowering their hands and stop praying. As a result, the connection is cut and evil prevails. So, never stop praying, never lower your hands, regardless of the battle you are facing, because soon God will give you the victory. We can understand that somehow there is a connection between what we do physically and what happens spiritually. What we do with our physical bodies here makes a difference in the spiritual world. Another important point is that Moses never doubted or questioned God. He simply obeyed without doubting. How many times has God given you direction on what to do here on earth and you did not obey or doubted? How many times has God asked you to leave that job, that person, or that harmful habit, and you did not obey because you didn't believe that God would sustain you, do not question. When God told Moses to raise his hands, Moses did not argue with God, saying he couldn't do it. The truth is, physical obedience brings spiritual liberation. How do you know when God is speaking to you? Simply when a thought comes that requires action and that thought doesn't stop coming to your mind when you wake up, drive, eat, or rest. Be sure that it is God speaking to you, so obey today. Many people do not demonstrate their belief in God physically. They think everything is only in the realm of intellect, feelings, and opinions. However, this passage from Exodus shows us that Moses, in that moment, 
had spiritual manifestation through his prayer combined with the physical act of having his hands raised toward the heavens throughout the entire battle. People think there is no need for a physical act to have answers to their prayers. They believe they are humble enough and they feel they don't need to go to church physically because God knows their hearts. People think they don't need to take risks because if God wants it, he will do it for them. In short, when it comes to God, everything is reduced to things. Zoo. Internal feelings and assumptions without external manifestation by the individual lack credibility. If you tell your spouse, I love you without physical actions in daily life to prove it, your declaration of love lacks credit. It's like the old saying, talk is cheap. With God, it's no different. He wants us to demonstrate with actions what we say to Him. The same effect occurs when we fast. This physical act sets in motion God's action, where spiritual power is unleashed. We can see this in Daniel chapter 10, verses 2 and 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Daniel was almost 90 years old when he undertook this fast, showing the extent of his faith. While a young person fasting for three weeks is one thing, a 90-year-old man fasting for such a duration is remarkable. Daniel was grieving for the people of Israel who were enduring great hardships and difficulties at that time. This illustrates that when we have communion with God, we care for those facing hardships and deprivation. Daniel lived in the palace of Babylon, held a position in the kingdom, yet mourned because his people were suffering. Similarly, we should feel saddened today by seeing so many people suffer in this world without knowing God. After this fasting period, an angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel. We can see in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. From this passage, we can note that from the very first moment Daniel began his fasting and prayers, God had already sent the answer through the angel. However, there was a demonic principality obstructing the angel's path, leading to a spiritual battle lasting 21 days. Only when Archangel Michael was sent to clear the way did the angel bring the response to Daniel. This highlights the existence of powerful demonic forces capable of hindering an angel's path necessitating the intervention of Archangel Michael to open the way for Daniel's answer. Jesus spoke about this in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, but this kind never comes out except by prayer and fasting. Perhaps you are going through a situation similar to Daniel's, where you are praying to God, but it seems the answers are not coming. My friend, sometimes something more is required. Daniel never lost faith or allowed himself to be discouraged because the response was taking time. Many people fail to receive answers because they become disheartened. Their faith is conditioned solely on what they see. Those truly of faith do not despair for they know there is a spiritual battle and perseverance is necessary for victory. There is a war between angelic and demonic forces and you and I play an important role in determining who wins or loses in this spiritual warfare. What we do physically can release spiritual power. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. When we are certain, we become confident and naturally achieve our goals. However, when doubt enters, it automatically cancels faith, bringing fear, anxiety, worry, and despair. Today, fasting is not only about abstaining from food. There are other forms of food that the world offers that nullify our faith and communion with God. Every day, people feed on bad news, entertainment leading nowhere, lies, gossip, resentments, and many other things that block the creature from connecting with the Creator. Today, merely refraining from eating is not enough. True fasting is depriving oneself of what the world offers that distances you from God. For a response from heaven, a physical action is required here on earth. We must pray and raise our hands as Moses did. 
fast, pray, persevere, and disconnect from the world as Daniel did. If you're going through a struggle in your life, if you have a legal case that won't resolve, if you have an illness that won't go away, I challenge you to do something extra this week. I challenge you to fast from worldly things for three weeks, just like Daniel, praying every day without lowering your hands as Moses did. There may be something blocking your victory and you need to do your part in this spiritual war. Do this and be assured that the answer will come and something supernatural will happen in your life. Thank you for watching this video. If it helped you or made sense to you, please share, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel to receive our upcoming videos. Stay with God.